the Ascent 95 by Flex RC. This is their, their second version of it. Um, get a quick weight of the frame. Point four ounces, nine grams. The standoffs, apparently those are weightless. Better strap, 11 grams, 11 grams for the frame. Let's see, how does that compare to like this one? Like the, I don't remember what this guy was. 12 grams. So, pretty light frame. Let's do some measurements. It's arm thickness. Let's see, these are going to be two millimeters. Two, mil two millimeter thick arms, and then the canopy is two millimeters. Well, I guess it's like 2.1 millimeters, but whatever. Pretty thin, a lot thinner than a lot of other quads out there. Um, really neat design. The whole canopy just kind of fits together. Just like so. Just kind of flex the canopy back and over the edge. And this is where you'll, your stack will be protected and your, well, it's designed to run with the Run Cam Micro Swift or Micro Swift 2. Same, same footprint, same sort of thing. Comes with a actually a pretty nice battery strap if you're going to go with one of these styles, or you could go with a more traditional battery strap like this cheap one here. All you'll have to do is just grab a pair of scissors and make it a little narrower and cut it short enough to, to work. But we're going to use we're going to use the one that came from Flex RC, and it also comes with two. Uh, I believe these are 20 millimeter standoffs, which the camera's 20 millimeters wide should fit right between a canopy. We'll put all that stuff to the side for now. One of the things I've already gone and done, which I like to do to a lot of my builds, is uh, put a little CA glue on the edges. Uh, super glue for in layman's terms. I don't know if it makes a difference, but it certainly feels a lot better. Uh, one of the things I noticed first with this frame is how flexible it is. I don't know if you can see that. It flexes a lot. Um, Definitely flexes less in this direction than it does in this direction. It probably has to do with the, the cut and the weave of the carbon fiber. Not that how it flexes makes or really translates to anything. There's a lot of different grades and weaves and weights of carbon fiber. This stuff may be super weak, super indestructible. Um, time will tell. I'll be honest with you. It's pretty strong stuff. I've got another one right here that I've already built up. I'll talk about this one later, but I have beat the crap out of that thing. And it and it's holding up pretty darn well. Uh, Alright, so with this build, it's going to be, like I said, the Ascent 95. And I've got these motors. I just got these in. These are the HGLRC Flame uh, 1105. Uh, 6,000 kV. Let me zoom in on that. Nice looking motors, uh, no bottoms. Uh, I don't really care. These little motors tend to get super hot, so if we uh, getting rid of the bottoms makes them uh, run a little cooler, then so be it. That's fine by me. Try to refocus this thing a little bit. So, HGLRC flame motors. Uh, these are not directional, so I would highly recommend picking up at least one extra, which, of course, why would I do that? I didn't do it. Uh, if, they were, if they were directional, I'd highly suggest picking up two, one counterclockwise, one clockwise. The flight controller is going to be the HGLRC uh, XJB 
425 amp all in one ESC super tiny uh, it is a proprietary design you can see the pin headers on here these made up with the F4 flight controller that goes with it uh, normal size USB port nothing strange there edge solder pads for uh, 5 volts 3.5 for the spectrum guys um, it's got a built in beta flight OSD which is awesome uh, it's got provisions for an LED strip, buzzer, you know, the normal stuff. It's got a boot button right here, rather than, you know, having to jump any pads. There's the underside of it. Again, there's that proprietary interface for getting VBAT from the flight controller, and then your ESC signal wires. So, not a whole lot of soldering to do there. Uh, looks like a pretty, pretty decent build. Uh, the print is decent on it. It, I mean, some of it's a little smeared, but it's all fairly legible. Uh, the real downside with a flight controller like that is there's no documentation. So this flight controller doesn't come with any manuals, so you've got to basically go online and try to find something. So. This is off Banggood. good. They're pretty good about putting it on the listing for the item because, well, it's not going to come with it. So remember to do that. All right, put the flight control and ESC aside. The other thing is the VTX. This is the companion piece for that, uh, that flight controller ESC combo. This is their, what is this thing? The HGLRC TX20. And I believe it's a 25 200 milliwatt VTX uh, fits on top of the stack with everything else. You do have to solder it in. There's no uh, proprietary connector or anything like that. So this could be used for other builds. It's got the typical UFL connector, sleeve, dipole, antenna. These things are great for these little micro builds, especially when you start beating them up pretty bad. Um, I do prefer direct soldering these. Uh, I've had a few where this portion actually just ends up breaking off of the uh, off the board and you're stuck with well desoldering this and cutting this stripping it back and soldering it on there but hey you know we do what we can do so there's that put that aside that this piece did come with a tiny bit of instruction um, just basically how to switch it from 25 milliwatt 100 milliwatt to 250 milliwatt. Oh, apparently this is 250. I believe the listing said it was 200. But, oh, either way. Uh, frequency chart. It's got all the all the illegal bands. L band, H band, all that crap. Yeah, whatever. Don't need that. I'll figure it all out. Uh, the camera. This is going to be the Runcam Micro Swift 2. Uh, I do not plan on using the OSD because the Betaflight OSD will, I mean, it is, has a shoulder better than the OSD that's built into this. Uh, plus it's less wires that have to run. So that's always good, less weight. Uh, these cameras are now coming with the nice little joystick, awesome silicone wire, a mounting bracket, and an extension cable for, uh, for your OSD so you can leave a little pigtail connected to your OSD so you can you know weasel it out somewhere on the side of your quad and you can connect this because it does have preset light modes on this one um, which is pretty nice uh, I've played around with it a little bit it seems to have pretty good color uh, reproduction I really like it um, it's just as good as the uh, the original Runcam Micro Swift except for it's got a few new features and the OSD if you if you want to swing that way but if you've got a Betafoid OSD and even if you've got a uh, MWOSD, I don't know why on earth you would use the one built into that. Um, the other option, if you don't want to go with this little guy here, is this thing. This is the, the new Runcam 
TX25 transmitter. This thing is super slick. Uh, if you want a even lighter, more compact build, albeit you're stuck at 25 milliwatts, and you know, run cam, they're responsible. They're only giving you the, the bands that you should have if you're in the US. I don't know about people across the pond or in other countries, but uh, this is built to fit right on this. Uh, it stands off, it's got, it comes with little standoffs, mounts right there. This plugs into here. This goes to VBAT. Uh, well, not VBAT, but uh, I believe it's 5 volts. I don't know what the voltage range on this is. Uh, 3.5 to 5.5, so basically 1 to 3S. Nope, not 1 to 3S, but 3.5 to 5 volts. So there's that. Um, I've already had it on this just to see the fit and finish. Uh, and it is, it is nice. Apparently, I forgot to put my screws back in that camera, so I'll have to do that before I put it back together. But this is another option. Um, there's no, no else, uh, you know, no digital display like this guy. But I mean, really, how often do you change your, your frequencies? I know I, I fly by myself, and maybe with one other person, we pretty much know which channels that we like, and uh, pretty much stick with it. So that's another option for it. Okay. So I'm going to try building this with basically what you would have if you were kind of new to the game, or if you haven't really dumped a ton of money into it. I have a really nice Hacko soldering station, but I'm going to do it with this little guy. This is the, the Stain Smart, um, Stain Smart, sorry, Pro 32, same TS100, you know, same sort of thing. Awesome, awesome little soldering iron. Um, works great in the field. It comes with, a, with a, a wall power supply. Just go ahead and lob that connector in half or that cable and half close to the power brick, solder yourself XT60 on there. Now you can use this sucker in the field. And you can still use it at home. Great, great little soldering iron. Uh, tools. Tools are a big thing. Um, I've seen you know, I've seen videos of people trying to push, you know, these guys. These are okay for anything bigger than two and a half millimeter. Anything other than that, these tips are Super soft, cheese grade metal. These things are garbage once you get smaller. You need to invest in a good set of micro hex drivers. Wira, this is where it's at. One and a half millimeter, two millimeter, these things are lifesavers. No more stripped out screws for you. Uh, oh, I forgot to talk about the receiver. The receiver I'm going to be using is the FreeSky XM Plus. Um, great tiny little receiver. I've already gone ahead and trimmed back the antennas because these things come as a fifth wave which uh, and I'll just do some research on uh, wave propagation. Quarter, half, three quarter, full wave. Those are the ways you want to go. Fifth wave, I don't know whose idea was that was but it doesn't work well. Trim, uh, you need to have to trim, I don't know, I think it's like two or three more millimeters off of the jacketing. Strip it back. Really easy to do with a decent exacto knife. Just be super careful not to strip past the dielectric here, and you will get much better range out of these. And look at all of your um, 2.4 gigahertz transmitters, even the ones that come on your pre-builds, like uh, the Ishin Lizard. Fifth wave. I don't know why. Make it quarter wave, and you will thank me, or whoever else. You'll thank somebody. Life will be better. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. There's the box for one of the motors. I don't need that. Get that out of here. Um, solder. I've recently been turned on. Uh, Joshua Barwell had a video from a, a couple weeks ago. Um, guy from SRA was talking about a solder. I've used um, the typical typical solders. Uh, I just picked up the 6373. Uh, sorry, 6337 solder this stuff is money if you're in the market to buy solder spend the extra couple bucks to get this stuff it is awesome fast shipping uh, really good stuff uh, I'll, I'll probably I'll never go back to the other stuff unless I have to or if it's or if I run out of that stuff and haven't gotten it yeah this is what I've been using this is you know the normal 60 40 mix still works works fine um, but this is better in just about every way except for price and it's not really all that much either okay so enough rambling we'll go ahead and start putting this guy together 
uh, one thing I've noticed between this frame and this one, which same frame, but just purchased at different times, is the fit is a little different between the two of them. Uh, I'll show you right here. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but trying to put the screws in, they are super tight. There's no wiggle room for any sort of play at all. Like this one, this doesn't fit. I'm going to have to thread that in there. So one of the things I'm going to need to do, and I really don't like doing it, because carbon fiber dust is terrible for you. So I'm going to have to file out some of these holes. Um, this is a set of needle files, a really good set of needle files, and just start filing. Uh, the dust is really, really bad for your health. Do not breathe this stuff in. I have a respirator on, wink, wink. Let's go ahead and try to wobulate these holes a little bit. So we can try to get this stuff to fit together a little better. Um, yeah, this frame's tight. Uh, like I said, the other frame, nah, she's yeah, it was nice and loose and fit together really well. I, and I don't mean it was loose like it was too uh, too much filed out, or the holes were too elongated, but this one is just too tight, way too tight. So I'll just spend a couple minutes on each of these arms, clean them up. Uh, one thing I, I noticed with some other quads is they, uh, they taper the edges, which I don't know if it adds to the strength or what, it definitely feels a lot nicer in hand, looks a lot nicer. Uh, but I don't know if it helps. Um, composites are one of those weird things. You know, if you give, you know, it's all layered together. If you give an edge the chance to peel back and delaminate, it's going to do it, and it's going to do it fast. Uh, so maybe having all the layers cut the same without a taper to it is stronger. I have no idea. I'm not an expert in composites. I just know what I like. I like tapered, but if it, uh, if it detracts from the strength, then, well, who needs it? As far as I'm concerned, quads aren't uh, supposed to be visually appealing on the outside. They can be, but it's not my primary goal here. Ugh. Carbon dust. Gross. Clean it off. And we'll just go with this one. Clean this one. By the way, this is my first build on camera. Uh, definitely not my first build overall, but I, uh, I felt like I felt like I, there wasn't a whole lot about the Ascent 95. Um, because at first blush, I'm gonna tell you, I wasn't too impressed with this frame. But with my other build and the stupid things I've done with it. Tell you what, this thing is, is really nice. Uh, a couple of other micro quads that I've used, uh, you know, the frames are decent, they're built well, but they all have a weird, a weird stack layout, or you know, the stack's a little weird on like really strange centers of gravity, strange positioning places. This this frame is pretty low and in line with the CG with frame right. So these two seem alright. Let's hit these a little bit more here. Um, as far as up and down go on the frame, I really don't think there's a difference. There might be. But, uh, again, the, the Ascent 95, no instructions, uh, no assembly instructions. Just kind of poke around online. There's a couple forums where people talk about things related to quads and quads it right there. Nice set of flush cuts. Really going to make your life a little bit easier here. That's one. Two.
minus three. So that's how she's gonna be. Alright. Throw this over to the side. One down, three to go. Just repeat the same process for the other two motors. Uh, I just got this this Gorilla Quads silicone mat. It is really nice. Um, price is pretty affordable. Um, definitely recommend their product. Uh, nice little ribs here. Things don't roll off. These are all. These are four little recess pockets. Um, keeps your screws nice and organized. Keeps things from flying off the table. I'm gonna put a nut on the corner of this thing. Actually, I can put it out on there. You just stand off. A lot easier to grab a hold of. It's a little bit easier. Make life easier. Um, I am not going to soft mount these motors. Uh, at least not in the beginning. Um, I will try soft mounting or attempt to soft mount the flight controller, but uh, not too worried about. Soft mounting the motors. Um, if uh, if at some point while tuning it, you know, I get weird weird oscillations and extra heat and all that stuff, then yeah, we'll go ahead and try soft mounting them. But I feel like soft mounting is kind of a a fix and not just the way it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah, there's lots of proof that soft mounting is better, but if you don't have to, why bother? And I'm just trying to fake this out around where I would think the standoff would be. And like I said, I'm not going to mount these on top of the board. I'm going to mount them underneath. Uh, pads go all the way through top and bottom, so it doesn't really matter. If I'm using the top or the bottom to measure them out, this is just making life a little bit easier. And the reason I don't want to mount them on top is I don't want anything to accidentally come in contact with the flight controller. Not for shorting out or anything like that, but like I just said, I'm going to try soft mounting the flight controller, so don't want anything touching it and inducing any weird vibrations and oscillations that just aren't there. Uh, by the way, these motors, uh, they come with Pretty decent hardware. Uh, so far, it seems to be pretty decent, anyways. Um, one and a half millimeter uh, is the size of the hex driver I need to turn those suckers. But they're actually, let's see, these are uh, two millimeter. Two millimeter uh, is the, the thread dimension. So if you need new screws, different screws, longer screws, shorter screws, whatever. Well, shorter screws are pretty easy. You just cut them and clean up the threads. Longer screws, well, keep cutting it, keep cutting it. It's still too short. I don't get it. I'll get this one here. And good, good, good. All right, one more. This is in focus. And all right. I don't have a standoff here, but I'm just going to pretend this one there and wears out and around. If you have never built one of these before, or if you've bought a pre-built and you've never had to deal with removing and replacing a motor, three wires, some are colored, some aren't. These ones are, obviously they're all black, because it doesn't matter where you hook them up, as long as 
all three wires are on you know one of the three pads so this is one ESC this is you know all the way around as long as all the wires are on one of these three pads doesn't matter if the motor ends up spinning the wrong direction after you get it built and power up not a big deal there's two ways you can fix that you can either swap two of the wires or we can fix it in the BL Heli Suite which is the easy way to do it we're going to do it that way if that's the case alright so I'll go ahead and take these standoffs off I have to throw twist four, so this is four. The wide part, this wider arc goes in the back, the narrow one goes in the front. So to solder this up, the easiest way I can think of is I'm going to. I'll take all the motors off. Start thinking upside down and backwards. I can barely think straight as it is. We'll, uh, solder it together like that. And then we'll assemble it back on the board or on the frame after we get it soldered. I'm just going to leave the motors in kind of a general layout of where everything's supposed to go. Silicone wire is really nice because you can just grab a hold of a little bit of it with your fingernails and you just strip with your fingernails. And of course, it's not going to work for me. Come on, there we go. This way is just barely pinch the jacket and pull. You're not, you got to find that fine line between pinching it and cutting it. Two more. Two. Three. some wires. First, grab some blue pack. Alright. If you've never seen this stuff, it's called, you know, it's referred to as blue tack. I think it's actually sold as um, like 3M uh, picture mounting adhesive. No, it's for like sticking pictures to cement walls and things of that nature. You know, we don't want to drill holes in your wall. We want to stick something to it. This is the stuff you use. All right, so we grab ourselves a section of wire. Never 
just start wiggling around until it breaks. Always clip it because this wire is hollow on the inside, if you didn't know that. The inside of it, there's a uh, thin bead of um, rosin core flux on the inside. And if you just pull on it and stretch it, you end up squeezing that stuff out. It's a you know certain ratio for how much wire is in there. And the other thing you want to do is get yourself a paper towel, some isopropyl alcohol, and clean your solder wire. Because this stuff oxidizes. Oxidi oxidation does a lot of bad things. Uh, a, it creates corrosion. It definitely uh, inhibits the ability to transfer heat from, from the, the iron to the work. And it puts impurities in there, creates a weaker solder joint. This is one of the most important things you can do is clean your solder. The three C's of soldering are cleanliness, cleanliness, and cleanliness. So give her a little Pro 32 uh, start. Heats up really quick. And I do have a, uh, a really narrow tip on here. Focus. No, it's not focus. All right. Well, anyways, really narrow tip. Just clean your old solder off of there. No more call on there. Get the old solder off. All right. Get the solder off the tip. You want to avoid touching this as much as you can. These oils on your fingers will transfer onto it. Put a tiny bit of solder on your wire. Uh, by the way, I'm uh, about 615 degrees ish Fahrenheit. You metric folk, I don't know. Google it. I don't know what it means. Just a little bit of wire, a little bit of solder. Just want a light coating of solder on your wire. Not a lot, just a little. A little peak on there, but I'm not too worried about we're gonna end up cutting that off, anyways. And we'll do it all free here. Very awkward to do without being able to get right up on top of it like I normally would since the camera's in the way. And if we're doing this, a chisel tip would be better, but you know, that's not what I have on there, and I really don't feel like changing it, so we're just going to do this with the pointed tip. Uh, the pointed tip is really nice for getting it and soldering on those really tiny little pads. Clean that tip up real quick there. I really hope you're not seeing the top of my head right now. But I don't know what's got to live with this thing. This thing will time out and cool itself off, but I don't want to do that. So the longer you have heat on there, the faster the tip corrodes. And then you can start buying new tips, because once your tip oxidates, oxidizes, or gets oxidation on it, uh, it stops transferring heat as well. So I'm going to turn it off, and before it cools off, take your solder and stick a bunch of solder on there. Now this is another super important thing to do because that solder will cover the, the metal on the tip 
And if the metal can't get to the air can't get to the metal because the solder's on there, it's not gonna oxidize nearly as fast. So got our motors wired up or uh tinned up. Grab our ESC here and we're gonna solder not on top, we're gonna solder underneath. So like this. Helping hands are super helpful. Kind of like it's in the name. Uh, you just want to, if, if you do get one of these, you just want to make sure you cover the little gator clips here with uh, some heat shrink or something to protect whatever it is you're grabbing a hold of there. So let's see, this board is going to go down like this. I'm going to start on this pad. See, I stripped way too much wire off this. So I don't know what the heck I was thinking. I wasn't paying attention actually, that's what happened. So then turn that off. And right. I'll go ahead and we're going to get in here and we're going to try and solder. Well, probably should Oh! Solder iron melted to my. My mat, my new mat, darn it. Uh, yeah, one thing I don't like about this is it doesn't come with any stand. Uh, I'm sure you could buy or build or do a lot of other things to make this work out for you since there's no stand, but it does not come with anything and it's super annoying. But it is pretty cheap, so I guess you get what you get. Uh, this is not running the fir stock firmware, by the way. These are upgradable. Um, a lot of different features. This stock firmware is just fine. If you get bored and you feel like messing around with it, there's there's other things you can do with it. Alright, I'm going to grab my solder here. Ooh, just a tiny bit on the tip. Grab my motor. Get my wire right where I want it. Again, super awkward with the camera and get it. There we go. There's one. Now that's in there and it's kind of tacked into place. Let me go ahead and put that there in the uh, little helping hands here. No useful tools. A little tiny pair of electronics tweezers. And these ones are almost too small. Grab your waste tweezers out of the medicine cabinet. Those will work just fine. Just don't let her catch you using them. Oh, by the way, I've already gone through and tinned the pads on this flight controller. Um, always tin the pads first. It was just just make life a lot easier for you um, because you won't have to add as much heat or solder you can get in get the wear on there and get out real quick just like that and you want to hold it there until it kind of flashes over a little bit duller of a color solder up let's try this again I'm off camera a little bit here. Just I guess I can see it a little better. And there we 
here we go. That's a lot better there. Perfect dish. Perfect dish. That's what we're going for. Perfect dish. Okay, so that's one motor down. Let's uh, let's get the next one. So let's do this guy here. which was a short wire. It's this guy. This one's going to go right there. <laughs> yeah, well, that was hot. That hurt. All right. If anything, this will at least be entertaining, watching me hurt myself. There we go. Okay, so let's get this next one. So I want to put it right the camera right there and I wouldn't worry about the wire extending out past the pad we can always go back and trim her down move the solder and get in wait for it to flow and get off of there give it a couple seconds and we're done we got that one on Focus this thing. There we go. There, how's that look? There we go. That's a lot better. Okay. So we've got that wire on there. Let's go ahead and just support this motor a little bit. Real. You know, until now, I've taken it for granted watching people do builds, especially like uh, Joshua Bardwell building things building quads on his his uh, YouTube channel. This is a lot harder than it looks. No joke. Put a solder on my tip and there we go. There's two. And I just want to rub this wire on around so it's going to get a hold of it. Come on, work with me here. There we go. Uh, Alright, now this one is quite a bit longer uh, than I would like. Um, I will say, the one, another thing I don't like about the this little portable soldering iron is the cord that comes with it. It is, um, really stiff and it doesn't like to just lay down it just kinda goes wherever it wants to go and it doesn't doesn't really comply too well All right, let's get pick a little solder on if you guys can see that but I got solder bent in such a way that it's just kind of sticking up in the air so I can put a little on the tip get in there and make my solder joint ow oh, that I really hurt when I burn myself it's been a long time since I've got myself the soldering iron but things we do right um, I'm not really sure why I soldered it to that side. Uh, apparently, my brain turned off for a little bit, and I got confused. Well, no matter. Maybe this will work out just fine. We'll see. 
and map this up. Let's see where we end up. One, two. And by the way, you know, if you want to mount this, just solder these right to the top of the board. Especially if you're, if you want to just do this quick and easy, and just do it that way. It's so much easier. This is, this is a real pain in the butt doing it this way. It's pretty. It looks good. Uh, I do feel like it offers a, a bit more protection to the components, but I'll tell you what, it is, uh, it is a lot harder to do. Halfway there. Okay. Which one's my shortest wire? Yeah, they're all about the same. Doesn't really matter. Short wire is gonna go in the corner. Oh, let's see, I'm messing with my orientation and everything, so I'm all all backwards up in my head. You can afford one of these little portable solder, portable soldering irons, and like a, like a bigger solder station, like a Hacko. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have both. I'll tell you what, a Hacko is super nice soldering iron. Comes with the with a little copper uh, steel wall type thing to clean the tip and the little stand, sponge and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> pretty nice. You can just stick it in there and just not going to burn yourself with it. It never shuts off on its own though. That sucks. But in my opinion, if you were only going to be able to afford to buy one soldering iron, instead of going to, I don't think Radio Shack exists anymore, but you know, one of these, you know, someplace that sells soldering irons, you know, brick and mortar store. You're gonna end up with probably a piece of crap. A little 25, 15, 25 watt soldering iron that's barely capable of maintaining heat. And it's not just the max temperature it can get to, it's a thing called, uh, uh, I think it's called reserve, which is basically how long it can. How long the soldering iron can keep giving up its heat without dropping its temperature? Um, you know, just about any soldering iron can get get up to super high temperatures, but as soon as you touch the work, the work is pulling heat out of the soldering iron. So if your solder iron is a low wattage, you can get to 600 degrees pretty quick. You can stay there, but as soon as you touch the work, the work pulls heat out of the tip and your iron cools off and if it doesn't have a big enough element or if whatever it is that controls the element isn't sensitive enough your temperature will drop and then you end up with cold joints poor joints and just just general crap solder joints in the end and that's when things start breaking and people get frustrated. Yeah, it's just it's just no good. Uh, but you know, like I said, I don't know if I said it, but if I could only choose one, I could only afford one. Uh, this little portable field soldering iron would be the one I would get. No offense to the Hacko or the people who like Hacko or the you know any other soldering station, wellers and things like that. They're nice, but if you're only going to get one, this is the one to do it because you can easily turn it into a field soldering iron and you will have something that you can repair with out in the field, which is super nice. Alright, well, it's, uh, it's starting to shape up to something. It's starting to look like something. Something, something. This is another good test of your uh, of your solder uh, joint strength is if this stuff hasn't broken yet, you 
probably doing it right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just gravity holding those things in right now. Or it's the solder is holding in and it's fighting gravity. Okay, last one. Let's just let's get this. I hear you people, I hear everybody screaming, hey, you're not cleaning your iron between joints, and you are correct. Because? You know why? Because I'm being lazy. And I should be cleaning it between every, every joint, but...